Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the main news on Kamni TV. My name is Sylvia Zulu. Here are the top stories making headlines in our news tonight. UPND accused of dictatorship in the YWC zone elections in Kalikiliki Township. BOZ to disperse 400 million kwacha in initial payments to investors bank depositors. Lusaka Kapo accused of killing maid last year commenced trial. In international news, Mali bans political party activities as cause for elections grow. And in sports news, Zambian embassy in Morocco hails Copper Queen's victory. I will be back with the details after this break. Enjoy the benefits of an instant loan with us ranging from 1,000 kwacha to 750,000 kwacha paid express once collateral is viewed, valued and verified. Call us on 0763-595-0779-432-993. Classified Financial Express. Here as your financial friend. And now the news in detail. Lusaka's Foxdale area has been hit by an erratic water supply for three weeks and residents are demanding an explanation from Lusaka Water and Sewerage Company. The residents lament the ordeal of having to buy water bowsers as an alternative source of water, stressing the financial toll on their budget. And some residents are worried that if the shortage of water is not addressed, Cholera and other waterborne diseases may break out in the area. Access to clean and safe water is an important aspect of life for every individual as it facilitates key daily activities such as cooking, bathing, washing and cleaning among others. According to development goal number 6 by 2030, Zambia seeks to ensure availability and sustainability However, access to this important resource has remained elusive in Lusaka's Foxdale area following its erratic supply for weeks. On Thursday, 11th April 2024, residents of Lusaka's Foxdale area took to Lusaka Water and Sewerage Company, LWAC, to peacefully protest against this inconveniencing development. The residents have told Camnet News that the problem has been going on for years, a situation which they have described as a burden owing to the financial toll on their budget as they have to fund alternative sources of water as well as the heightened risk of waterborne diseases such as cholera, typhoid and diarrhea. And yes, it has been reported several times, not once. And fortunately as well, these people are on our group. We have um, a WhatsApp group, no response. Um, there's times where they will actually just send a bowser, which happened recently because I think we've made enough noise. Places the middle of um, a complex of over 100 houses and said, here, yeah, come and draw water from the bowser. What about people without um, maids or garden boys? A thousand liter tank with a 20 liter bucket. So it's not feasible, it doesn't work. So we have complained about this and nothing has been done about it. In area Ngombe has water supply at least every day. They have water supply. And in Foxdale, we don't have water at all. And we have to depend on buying water bowsers, which cost about 700 kwacha per 5,000 liters. So if you buy that, it only lasts about a week, it's done, or less, depending on how you're Lusaka Water and Sewerage Company, however, denied media coverage and opted for a private indoor meeting with the residents who have since been assured that their concern will be addressed in due course. One month, then the whole month there's no water. Maybe two months, there's no water, not even a drop. I mean, I think it's uh, it's unsanitary. And I don't know if you want us to have cholera and if you want us to start suing Lusaka water, if, if possible. I think it's unfair. We are your customers. You need to supply us with water. That is the agreement. That we pay bills. It's not like we're not paying you. We're paying you for a service. We're not, we're not a charitable organization. You know, we're not begging for your water, no. It's just a necessity, it is a need. Mm -hmm. And we do not want to get sick. And even you, you do not want to have blood on your hands because you are not supplied with water. I think it's unfair. And bowsers are expensive. Your bowsers are one. I think I'll even show you. I have written on your page before. Wendy Mwanza, one of the residents, has since appealed to the Ministry of Water and Sanitation Development to positively respond to their concerns. Without water. And that's what's been happening with our estate. 
it's a good beautiful estate but we do not have water and Lusaka water are very much aware of it even on their page I have written several times on their page but all they do is they phone you and then that's it so we're hoping that this meeting will come to fruition we'll have water as he promised us so Chanda Mwango for Cabinet News in Lusaka A 42-year-old man of Lusaka from a urinary disease is appealing to well-wishers to assist him with financial support for his medical bills. Jackson Mutengo, who has been suffering from a non-urinary disease for four years, says he has been living in pain and is unable to sit due to the condition. He has since appealed to the medical fraternity to help him find a solution to his condition as efforts tried from both traditional and hospitals has proved futile. <laughs> An action that can be performed by a two-year-old, but for 42-year-old Jackson Mutengo of Lusaka's Mutendere East, sitting is a source of excruciating pain and for the past four years he has been unable to sit down and spends most of his day standing by the to come. Mr. Mutengo, a father of five, originally from Lopula province, Chiengi district, narrates how his condition started in 2016. He says he has left his children. that life has become difficult for both him and them due to his condition. He is appealing to well wishers in the medical fraternity to help him find a solution to his current predicament. <laughs> And young brother to Mr. Mutengo says the condition has terribly affected everyone and the family is in dire need of medical assistance so as to bring back sanity to his elder brother's life. <laughs> Mr. Mtengo's condition is not safe. State that the patient needs to undergo a cytoscopy, but on the day he visited the hospital, the machines were out of order. A cytoscopy is an examination of the bladder and urethra using a cytoscope. Cherish Sibote for Comnet News, Lusaka. The Bank of Zambia, BRZ, says it will displace 400 million kwacha as initial payment to depositors in the Possessed Investors Bank by 26th April 2024. Speaking during a press conference Thursday, BOZ Deputy Governor Operations Francis Chipimo says each depositor will be entitled to withdraw a maximum of 500,000 kwacha with those having excess amounts to wait for further guidance. Dr. Chipimo says Investors Bank in possession has 57,000 accounts and the central bank will in six weeks complete the preparation of the statement of affairs of the possessed entity. 
has assured all depositors in the stress bank in possession that their deposits are safe, adding that the government has pledged one billion kwacha to offset the insolvency. The Bank of Zambia Boards has made its first update in the administration of now Invest Trust Bank in possession following the takeover of the Soviet entity on April 2, 2024. Top on the agenda was the bank's update to 57,000 depositors who have been waiting for the way forward on Invest Trust Bank, whose insolvent figures stand at 850 million kwacha. Addressing the media during a press conference Thursday, Bose Bank Governor Denny Kariaria assured depositors that their deposits are safe, disclosing that government has come to the aid of the situation with a pledge of one billion kwacha. May I now take this opportunity to assure the depositors that their deposits are safe as the government the gap between the assets and liabilities of invest trust in possession. I must mention that this fiscal support is critical in the context of the need to protect the integrity of the financial system. Dr. Kadiaja Assis denied assertions that the bank's policies could have contributed to the failure of Evans Trust Bank, stressing that as a regulator, BOS does not interfere in capital challenges, however can do so when deemed fit in liquidity challenges. Obviously, policy affects individuals and institutions differently, but there are mechanisms to deal with those who may face that challenge. And this is why I said we make a distinction between liquidity problem and capital problem. If the problem is liquidity, the bank has got a range support an institution involved. But if it's capital, we can't step in the ownership position of the owners. That's what it means. It means that the institution can no longer go as a going concern. That's the main issue. So I hope that helps you to understand that we will not stop making policies because one institution or two are going to be affected. No, we look at the overall situation. Meanwhile, giving further details on payments to depositors, both Deputy Governor Operations Francis Chipimo said each depositor will be entitled to up to 500,000 kwacha by April 26, 2024, with those holding excess amounts to wait further guidance. The Bank of Zambia will facilitate the first payment to all depositors up to a maximum of 500,000 kwacha. This payment will cover all total deposit accounts. And here I must emphasize deposit accounts. For clarity, this means that those who have deposits at or below 500 kwacha will get payments that fully cover their deposits during this first payment period. Dr. Chipi Mufeda says 325 employees of Invest Trust Bank are since at home and will wait for the outcome of the possession process and will be dealt with according to the law. The central bank has since disclosed that the statement of affairs to determine the full scale of insolvency as well as assets and abilities of Invest Trust Bank will be ready in six weeks. For Kamne TV News, Afia Skaptula, Lusaka. Some aspiring independent ward development committee members have accused the ruling UPND of exhibiting dictatorship committees on elections in Kalikiliki Township. In an interview with Kamnet News, one of the aspiring members who opted to remain unknown accused the ruling party of abusing power, citing its negative impact on the democratic status of the country. And another candidate says he was denied entry into the premises as he did not subscribe to their order of operations of being forced to vote for the UPND nominee. Meanwhile, United Party for National Development Deputy Youth Spokesperson Phineas Pumulo 
has dismissed the allegations stating that the people masquerading as UPND cadres are not their members. Barely 48 hours after commotion characterized what development committee elections in Lusaka's Mtendere area, a similar situation has been witnessed at the WDC elections in Kalikiliki compound in Osaka as independent aspiring development committee members were barred from entering the premises while the elections were being held. A check by Camlet News found a named school in suspected United Party for National Development cadres who denied entry PF members in Tendere, equally blocking entry of anyone not voting for the UPND WDC aspiring candidate. This development, which is against the backdrop of President Hakainde Chilema's pronouncement of a cadre free country, has frustrated independent aspiring WDC members who were denied participation in the elections. In an interview with Cabinet News, one of the aspiring WDC members has bewailed the alleged dictatorship perpetrated by the UPND. Uh, people are barred from entering the shrines and the premises. If you are to be allowed to enter, you must say the person you are voting for, and that person must be somebody who is coming from the ruling party. So this is what is going on. The people that the community chose to stand for them, to represent them at WDC, they have all and they have brought in their own cadres. You cannot be allowed to enter the Shine Zambia gate. They are UPND cadres. And all those people that are there inside, they have been asked, whom are you voting for? I'm voting for so and so and so. If that person is according to what their program is. Another resident has cited the lack of transparency and accountability of the election process. Are civic positions that deals with the development and the welfare of the people in the community. They are not political positions as far as we are concerned. And as church leaders, we deal with the welfare of the people. We understand the challenges of the people. The vulnerable are found in the church. We visit them in their homes. So when this opportunity came, we said, okay, let's take up these positions so that we work together with the government and see to either how best can we develop our area. So when the announcement, they were going through announcing of today's nomination. Today we went there to submit our papers. We are told to go. That's information that those on the gate, and the gate was closed. You couldn't go in. Nominations were done. Where were you? But where was that information? The information that we had. Meanwhile, United Party for National Development Deputy Youth Spokesperson Phineas Pumulo has dismissed the allegations stating that the people masquerading as UPND cadres are not their members. So the allegations, so the allegations that our, our, our cadres are stopping people from participating, I mean, those, those allegations are not, are not, are not true. Mm -hmm. Yes. Others may be stopped because those who live in those same localities, they know the behavior of, the, of those, those who have put their names forward. Maybe they know their history. That's why they are doing that. But even the person who is a junkie, is also has, he has the right to participate. So if the others are being stopped, I think it is, it is, it is uncalled for. Everyone must be allowed to participate. As a party, we are not stopping. Chanda Mwango, for Camlet News in The United Party for National Development, UPND candidate for Malala Ward, Chris Hamonga, has successfully filed in his nomination papers for the local government by-elections scheduled for May 2nd, 2024. The by-elections have been necessitated following the passing of the previous UPND councillor, Oswell Mwanalila in February. And speaking shortly after successfully filing in his nomination papers, Chris Hamonga expressed his readiness to serve the people of Malala Ward and pledged to collaborate with party structures to ensure effective representation. The nomination was witnessed by UPND officials, including National Trustee Chris Chufuwe, Chikankata Member of Parliament Jacqueline Sabao, among others, and local leaders from Chikankata. The Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, has rejected the nomination of Isaiah Kandeke as a PF candidate for the forthcoming Kaela Ward by ECZ.
of Northern Province. Mr. Kandeke, who was laid by area member of parliament, Emmanuel Mpakata, and other party officials, had his party certificate rejected on premise that ECZ only recognized Mao Sampa as the official PF party president. Meanwhile, Lupososhi member of parliament, Emmanuel Mpakata, expressed displeasure at the development, further inciting that his party would file their candidate as an independent contestant since the period of time to file in a candidate had already elapsed. The Kailawad councillor said fell vacant after the resignation of then Ward councillor Baron Kaunda, who had been employed by the government. Malina, we were told inside there that uh, ECZ uh, had given strict instructions. There were strict instructions from Lusaka that uh, the only certif adoption certificate they can accept on Patriot Front is the one signed by Honorable Mao Sampa, who is purporting himself to be a president of PF. Because uh, so the ECZ is trying to construct a leadership for us. We never elected Sampa as our party president. He went to a retreat organized by the UPND, given state security and the state protection and everything, and up to now he's still enjoying state security. And he elected himself as a party president of a country called the PF of his. But we, the original PF, they refused us to accept our certificates. We said, okay, then we we come, we walked out, we didn't have we didn't want to cause any violence and because uh, we are not a violent party and we said uh, we'll come back again there. So we are just waiting for a two time to get back uh, as a PF so that uh, we want to present our candidates. Uh, of course, uh, as an independent. A farmer whose 14 year old daughter was allegedly murdered by a Lusaka couple has taught the Lusaka High Court that the accused promised to look after the deceased like their own. Constance Mwelwa was testifying in a matter where Smart Mumba Forty and his spouse Marjorie Lulembo of Lusaka's Chalala Rockfield area are accused of murdering her 14 year old daughter who worked as a maid. Mrs. Mwelwa testified that the accused were allowed to get the deceased after she stopped school in grade 4 on assurance that they would treat her as their own child and not work as a maid. The couple's residents of Lusaka's Chalala Rockfield area have pleaded not guilty to the murder charges. Mother to a 14-year-old maid who was allegedly murdered by her bosses has testified before the Lusaka High Court that she was never aware that her deceased daughter, Janet Chola, was working as a maid for a Lusaka couple that took her on the pretext of educating her in Lusaka after she stopped school in Mansa in grade 4. Constance Mwarwa, a peasant farmer, testified before High Court Judge Vincent Sloka that Smart Mumba, 40, and his spouse, Marjorie Lilembo, 30, were allowed to get the deceased after she stopped school in grade 4 on assurance that the couple would treat as their child, educate her, and not work as a maid. Mrs. Moelwa explains that the agreement was for her only child to seek education and also look after the accused children when she knocks off from school. In September 2023, social media was awash as news of the having been killed by the Lusaka couple made rounds. The mother of the deceased, in a testimony, told the court that before the couple got her daughter, she warned them not to beat her when she erred, but to cancel her. However, she was shocked to receive reports via phone that her daughter was eating porridge for the couple's children to the displeasure of the accused. The accused warned her to send transport fare instead of receiving a dead body. The following evening, she received a phone call that her child had died and that's how they evacuated the remains of her daughter and buried her in Mansa. 
When asked in cross-examination if she is aggrieved with the death of her child, she responded in the affirmative and indicated that she is very annoyed and wants the two love beds to be fixed by the courts. Smart Mumba, 40, and his spouse, Marjorie Lembo, 30, are accused of murdering Janet Chola. According to a police statement, it is alleged that on August 30, 2023, around nine hours, at the University Teaching Hospital police post with the body of Janet Chola seeking to procure a brought-in death certificate. However, law enforcement officials became suspicious of foul play upon discovering multiple physical injuries on the deceased body, prompting an immediate launch of investigations. Investigators from the Zambia Police Service determined that on August 29, 2023, the couple engaged in a physical altercation with the deceased leading to further questions surrounding the circumstances of the death of the maid. Trial in this matter continues on 9th May 2024. Nelson Zulu for Camnet News, Lusaka. A private relations manager at a named bank of Lusaka Salama has told the Lusaka Magistrate Court that there were no suspicious bank transactions which were made by former Minister of Foreign Affairs Joseph Malangi between the period 21. Eugene Kana, 38, narrated before Magistrate Irene Wishimanga that in March 2021, Drug Enforcement Commission officers contacted him asking for compliance customer mandate file and bank statements of Mr. Malangi, which were presented, indicating numerous deposits which were made. In this matter, Mr. Malangi and former Secretary to the Treasury, Fred Sonyamba, are charged with 10 counts of willful failure to comply with laid down procedures and possession of property suspected of being proceeds of crime. A banker has testified in the Lusaka Magistrate Court that no suspicious bank transactions were made nor detected by former Minister of Foreign Affairs Joseph Malangi between the period 2020 to 2021. A private relations manager at a named bank, Eugene Kana, 38, of Lusaka Salama Park, told Lusaka Magistrate Irene Wishimanga that there was no suspicions from several bank transactions which were made by the former. that in March 2021, the Drug Enforcement Commission officers contacted him asking for compliance customer mandate file and bank statements of Mr. Malangi, which were presented, indicating numerous bank transactions which were made for the stipulated time. Mr. Kana told the court that the first transaction was in November 2020 with 76,659 quarter to the highest transaction of 204,500 quarter on October 30, 2020, and disclosed that in 2017, Mr. Malangi was the highest earning client and a declaration of income was made. In this matter, Mr. Malangi and former Secretary to the Treasury, Fred Sonyamba, charged with 10 counts of willful failure to comply with laid down procedures, while Mr. Malangi is facing 8 counts of being in possession of property suspected to be proceeds of crime. Allegations in the first count are that between January 1st, 2020 and August 31st, 2021 in Lusaka, Secretary to the Treasury, jointly and whilst acting together with other persons unknown, willfully failed to comply with the law in the manner he allegedly allocated and authorized the transfer of 108,401,197 kwacha to the Zambian Mission account in Turkey for the procurement of real estate, among others. It is also alleged in the other accounts that Mr. Malangi between January 1st, 2020 and August 31st, 2021, in Lusaka, possessed a Bell 430 Jet Ranger helicopter property, reasonably suspected of being proceeds of crime. Trial continues in this matter. Nelson Zulu for Camnet News, Lusaka. We now take our first set of commercials. I will be back with more news after the break. Are you looking for a reliable and efficient courier company with international standards? Then let UBZ Courier, your trusted partner in Sweden.
your ultimate choice. Whether it's a small package or a hefty consignment, UBZ Courier handles it all locally and internationally. Our modern call center ensures personalized attention for every client. For seamless deliveries within Zambia and beyond, trust UBZ Courier. Call us now on plus 260-763-062-680 or visit us at plot number 15, Mwapona Road, Woodland, Lusaka, Zambia. UBZ Kuvia, a world-class brand that can be trusted. Potatoes, the unsung heroes of flavor. From crispy chips to creamy mush, potatoes are the versatile superstars of your kitchen. Grown with love by our dedicated workforce drawn from around the community of Palavana. Savenda Farm's commitment is to see to it that we have potatoes that are grown right, healthy, big and tasty. For that quick fix or big celebration or that chefs rely on the Savenda potato to create culinary masterpieces. And for others, it's that icebreaker to a delightful conversation. So, embrace the magic of Savenda potatoes. They're not just a side dish, they're the heart and soul of your kitchen. Savenda, save nations, develop Africa. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglo, your smart irrigation partner. Thank you so much for the news. The Zambia Medical Association has stressed the need for Zambia to transition and leverage on digital health systems if drug pilfering is to be curbed completely. In an interview with Cabinet News, ZMA Secretary General Dr. Oliver Kauma says the Ministry of Health needs to put in place electronic stock and drug monitoring systems in all healthcare facilities countrywide. Dr. Kauma reiterates the need for effective inventory tracking systems of prescriptions and drug dispensation in clinics and hospitals. Reports of drug theft and pilferage has become rampant in health institutions across the country. The act has negatively impacted patients who receive prescriptions on the basis that drugs are unavailable in areas where drugs have been distributed. The matter has raised concerns from various sections in society. It is for this reason the Zambia Medical Association is calling on government and the Ministry of Health to leverage on if this illegality is to be curbed. In an interview, ZMA Secretary General Dr. Oliver Kaoma says if health facilities have electronic inventory systems, it will be easier to track how much of the drugs received are being dispensed off to patients. An inventory system that is electronic and allows for tracking of prescriptions and dispensations. Once medication is dispensed, it must be entered in an electronic system. And remember, in health facilities, for medication to be released, there must be a doctor's uh, prescription, be it for those that are in the hospital, they are what we call drug charts. And these drug charts are used as evidence of having requested for that medi medication for that particular patient because those drug charts carry the name of the client that has been, um, who is in need of that medication. This also goes to the importance of us transitioning as a country into leveraging on the opportunities that digital health brings. Uh, management systems that are there. Dr. Kaoma adds that the association does not condone such behavior from medical professions and has called on law enforcement agencies to swiftly carry out investigations and bring the culprits to book. Courage that must be dealt with and Zambia Medical Association strongly believes that the law enforcement agencies should conduct investigations in areas where these scandals or these uh, vices are uh, being heard of. 
And we must also mention that as an association, we strongly, strongly discourage or stand against any member of the health profession who is involved in drug pilferage. The law must visit them. According to Sustainable Development Goal number three, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Target number 3.8 states that by 2030, the world must achieve universal health coverage, including financial risk protection essential health care services and access to safe, effective, quality and affordable essential medicines and vaccines for all. Therefore, it is important that patients across the country have access to affordable medication. Cherish Sibote for Covenant News, Lusaka. The chairperson of the Western Province Chamber of Commerce and Industry is encouraging the business community to seize the opportunity presented by this year's Komboka ceremony to promote and sell their products. Speaking at a media briefing held at Country Lodge, Chamber of Commerce and Industry Chairperson Imanga Kayama says the Chamber serves as the representative body for local businesses. She added that its main objective is to ensure that high standards are maintained in conducting business activities within the province. The preparation for this year's Komboka ceremony are underway. Western Province Chamber of Commerce and Industry is to refrain from excessive price hikes. During a recent press briefing held at Country Lodge, Imanga Kayama, the chairperson of the Western Province Chamber of Commerce and Industry, emphasized that the chamber serves as a representative for the business communities. Its primary objective is to ensure that high standards are maintained in a business practices throughout the province. Like we said, when, when there's little supply and the demand is high, the market forces, uh, which in a free economy, unfortunately, tend to be exaggerated. However, our role as the Chamber has been to engage uh, with our members and uh, appeal to them, because we can't force them, we can only appeal to them to fairly price the accommodation rates, actually showcase the winners of their event at the Miss Mwamboga that will take place on April 15th. So the World Fitness event will take place on April 12th. Social case. That's why we're highlighting the why it's critical for the business community to speak to each other because then we're able to consolidate all the activities under one calendar. Samuel Ritevere holds the position of secretary in the Western Province Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We need to be unique. We need to come and showcase. Uh, the uniqueness that we have uh, in the province. Um, for example, these are things uh, like um, what we produce. For example, we need to come and display uh, the cashew nuts that we do produce, the super rice that we produce, the very, very taste uh, fish, uh, the bufu that we, we have. Uh, so I want to appeal to the Mongo Municipal Council uh, to be able to uh, ensure that uh, our local business vessels are given also enough space to be able to uh, comfortably. In a related news, in Masiko Akalalambiri, one of the organizers for the Land Rover 109, shared the following statement. When we noticed the number of uh, Land Rover 109s, iconic British Land Rovers that have been traversing our terrains here in Western Province for decades on end. So we realized we had the resource that we could uh, turn into a motorsport event. So since these are very old vehicles that do not have the speed, but they have the power and the torque, we are doing this uh, in order to ensure that uh, our people in Western Province are very good an opportunity to showcase what they can do when it comes to motorsport. Musebo Kabila, Kamnet News in Mungu District, Western Province. Zambians for Unity, Peace and Development, Zupet, has expressed concern about the termination of employment contracts of over 400 workers due to the 
KCM. Zupeda President Ronnie Jerry has described reports coming from the Mastermind Services, a contractor engaged by KCM, as disheartening as many people depend on the mine for survival. Mr. Jerry has since called on the concerned stakeholders to accelerate the creditor scheme of arrangement to allow the data resources to fully take over the operations of KCM. We warn of such occurrences after noticing the slow pace at which government is dealing with the transition issue. We told government to expedite the transition process so that KCM would be in the hands of an investor, in this case Vedanta, resources that has promised to resuscitate the asset. There are other contractors, suppliers, who may think of laying off their workers because KCM is not functioning. Vedanta Resources has promised to settle arrears out to suppliers and contractors by KCM. If this comes to pass, more people will be employed and there will be some stability in terms of uh, economic activities that will take place in Chingola and Chirilagongwe. Government needs to act fast to save this situation. It is important that concerned parties consider accelerating the creditor scheme of arrangements so that the data resources can fully take over the operations of the mine. Since the creditor's notice was called for, we hope that the remaining legal issue will be dealt with amicably so as to allow the data resources to assume control of KCM. An audit sample of 182 schools countrywide on the utilization of school grants to June 30, 2023 has revealed glaring incidents of abuse and administration's failure to manage funds. The Ministry of Finance and National Planning carried out the sample as an internal audit undertaken by the Internal Audit Division at three schools per district two primary and one secondary per district in six selected districts per province. In a statement, the ministry says 182 sampled schools were funded about 80.5 million kwacha for the period under review. It explains that these funds findings with elements of abuse amounted to 13.4 million kwacha, while as those relating to management failure totaled to 60. 62.9 million kwacha, amounting for 17 and 78 percent of the total funding, respectively. The ministry adds that the Ministry of Education, at the time of the audit, had a total of 12,272.2 billion kwacha was funded to all schools during the period of 1st January 2022 to 30th June 2023. The statement further says if the same percentages were to be applied on the total funding to the total number of schools, it could be concluded that a sum of 356 kwacha was abused while 1.7 billion kwacha was not managed in line with the laid down standards. Abuse of funds included irregular transfer of funds in contributions by schools to higher offices such as district education boards, secretary, deps offices, provincial education offices, head teachers association, among others. Administrative lapses included high administrative costs to attend court up meetings, failure to account and misapplication of funds, among others. The Ministry of Finance has since cautioned managers of public funds to exercise prudence and comply with the relevant laws, regulations and guidance. Finance Management Act number one of 2018. Ministry of Information and Media Director Spokesperson has urged all councils to sensitize the public on how to access the 20% constituency development fund, which is meant for youth and women empowerment programs. 
Mr. Henry Kapata disclosed that he has observed that many people are not aware of the 20% component on the Constituency Development Fund, CDF, which is meant for the betterment of women and youth respectively. The director spokesperson was speaking when he visited the newly constructed Twapia Market in Dollar Central constituency. 1.4 million kwacha has been spent on the construction of Twapia Market in Indola District. The market, which is housing about 84 marketers, was constructed under Constituents Development Fund in Indola Central constituency. The construction of the new market shelter here. Before the dilapidated structure, at some point there, and people were not interested in trading from it because it was a closed structure. So we considered that favorably at the CDF and uh, the contract was given to a local contractor and employed some people here, some youths. And uh, we spent like uh, just over 1.4 million. Uh, one of the things that our committees in the district have been doing is such that they go to consult with the people and the people themselves come up with uh, a, you know development uh, that they need but this is what has come out of city of this is what has been built i must also appreciate is the adherence of our people vis-a-vis uh, -vis staying in the market uh, in their trading places ministry of information and media director spokesperson has toured the market Marketers are happy and have highlighted their concerns. Jacqueline Moba, Sanis, and Indola. We now take our last break. Still to come is sports and international news. Zambia, are you ready? Zambia Youth Conference 2024 is here with Archbishop Dr. Bernard and Mrs. Bibiana Nwaka under the theme Raising the Next Generation of Priests and Kings. From the 17th to the 21st of April 2024, speakers, Apostle Dr. Francis Piles, Bishop Robinson Fondong, and others and ministering in music, Ephraim, son of Africa. Time, from the 17th to the 19th of April, from 4 p.m. On the 20th of April, 4 p.m. On the 21st of April, from 9 a.m. at Living Water Global Church in Kitwe, Zambia, near Usakile, round about behind Puma Pumping Station. Come and become a history maker. This impending drought, it's time we look to alternatives of sustaining our crops. We as ISDP are promoting irrigation and water harvesting as the solution to challenges posed by climate change. 
watch our 13 week series as for our crops catch us every monday at 2040 hours repeats every tuesday at 1910And now, in international news, Malian authorities on Wednesday issued a decree banning political party activities amid calls on the ruling army junta to organize elections. The announcement was made by the government's spokesperson on state television on Wednesday evening. Abdullah Mega said the ban on political activities was made in the interest of maintaining public order. The statement did not specify any threats to public order emanating from political parties. There was no indication on when the suspension would be lifted. Mali has been under army rule since August 2020. Last September, the junta indicated it would renege on a promise to organize elections this past February citing technical reasons. No new election promises have been made. Here's a roundup of international news. Malian authorities on Wednesday issued a decree banning political party activities amid calls on the ruling army junta to organize elections. The announcement was made by the government spokesperson on state television. Abdullah Maiga said the ban on political activities was made in the interest of maintaining public order. The statement did not specify any threats to public order emanating from political parties. There was no indication on when the suspension would be lifted. Mali has been under army rule since August 2020. Last September, the junta indicated it would renege on a promise to organize elections meant to bring back civilian rule this past February citing technical reasons. No new election promises have been made. Amid his chants from demonstrators to regulations and policies on migration and asylum, the changes address the thorny issue of who should take responsibility for migrants when they arrive and obligations for other EU countries. Today we have voted in favour of a package that provides for a robust legislative framework that is the same in all member states, that puts humanity first, that understands all the different difficult aspects of this issue, that secures Europe's external borders, that provides clarity on applicable rules, that ensures the right balance between solidarity and responsibility in full respect of fundamental rights. Vote is open. The new rules include controversial measures. Facial images and fingerprints could be taken from children from the age of six and people may be detained during screening. Migrant and human rights groups mostly slam the changes. Migration is a European challenge which must be met with a European solution. One that is a fair and firm. And this is what the Pact on Migration and Asylum delivers. It will be making a real difference for all Europeans. First, more secure European borders, knowing exactly who crosses our borders by registering and screening everyone, while ensuring the protection of the fundamental rights through an independent monitoring. The 27 EU member countries must now endorse the changes, possibly in a vote in late April, before they can take effect. Hundreds of Muslim worshippers in Nigeria on Wednesday gathered to hold prayers for Eid al-Fitr to mark the end of Ramadan. The holiday is celebrated by Muslims around the world following the month-long period of fasting, which is scheduled each year according to the lunar calendar. Eid al-Fitr is seen at the end of the month of Ramadan. Uh, Eid al-Fitr has been a beautiful occasion. We've had thousands of Muslims come and gather for the sake of worship and in brotherhood. Um, in remembrance of Allah and, the, and the, our messenger as well. Muslims believe that fasting during Ramadan teaches self-discipline, self-control and empathy for those who are less fortunate. 
For Muslims, increased prayer, recitation of the Quran and acts of charity are also important during the month. The significance of the holy month of Ramadan to me is the love sharing, the peace and so many more that we do during that holy month. Like, um, like you wouldn't have to get angry or upset during the month of Ramadan because you being angry it's like reducing some of the reward, your good deeds you're going to get. And during the month of Ramadan there are a lot of things you can do to get a good deed. The Islamic holiday is often celebrated by spending time with family and gifting new clothes and sweets. And now, in sports news, head of mission at the Zambian Embassy in Morocco, Elifas Chinyonga, has praised the Copper Queens for the fighting and brave performance against the Atlas Lioness of Morocco, which saw them qualify for the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. Mr. Chinyonga has pledged continued partnership to ensure the sport discipline progresses. And Copper Queens forward Rachel Kundananji called for continued support for them to reach greater heights. The Copper Queens booked a place at the 2024 Paris Olympics following a 2 new win over the Atlas Lionesses of Morocco in the early hours of Wednesday at the Prince Mauli El Hassan Stadium. The Shpolo Polo have since been placed in Group B alongside Germany, United States of America and Australia. Congratulations to you guys for booking that ticket to Paris to the Olympics. Please. True to the prediction and uh, true to the discussion that we had uh, when you had your training yesterday, this is the result that you've produced. I think it, uh, you, your play in that field today was very familiar to a previous game you've play, played in that uh, same field before. It was a joy to watch you actually. It, uh, you produced the result that the nation is, uh, was waiting for, and we are really very proud. Um, I also want to say just a small word as um, your representative here in Morocco. I want to assure you that um, that game was a healthy game. There was no violence in, in that, and you've continued to carry the immense respect which you have in this country. Wherever we go, we are, they associate Zambia with football. And I think you've really put, uh, you've really put to say yes, we are really African champions and we deserve to be going to the Olympics. So it's, a, it's another happy day in Morocco, but um, I want to assure you that uh, as your embassy will continue to work on these relations, I think it's, it's healthy by working with the the Moroccans, they are our friends, and I think the loss they've taken it in a sportsman like Amanda. <coughs> thank you for, um, for this opportunity, and uh, we kindly say thank you for your support. Uh, you've been there for us just from the beginning until your date, and uh, seeing new people around us, uh, it motivates us uh, a lot. And uh, all we can say that uh, I remember yesterday. Uh, actually knew that uh, we are going to deliver today and this is what we have done as the Copper Queens and please never stop um, supporting us because with your support we are able to do anything just to make uh, to put a smile on your face. Thank you. The end of our main news, here's a recap of the stories making headlines. UPND accused of dictatorship in the WDC zone elections in Kadikiliki Township. BOZ to disperse 400 million kwacha in initial payments to Investrust Bank depositors. Lusaka Kapo accused of killing maid last year commenced trial. In international news, Mali bans political party activities as cause for elections grow. And in sports news, Zambian Embassy in Morocco hails Copper Queen's victory. Our verse for the day is coming from the book of Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not, do not be dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sylvia Zulu. Good night.